Have you ever seen a quarterback dissected the way we dissect Tua? I have something for Carlin and Canty. Canty and Carlin. It's an odd beef I have with them. It's a one-way beef, and I'll get to them in just a second, these guys on ESPN Radio. Uh-huh. Uh, because they're tearing apart Miami. They did it when the you know the Heat were making a championship run, and now they're doing it uh, to the Dolphins here. But have you ever seen a quarterback? Like It seems like every single pass he makes is dissected by a billion different experts, and none of them seem to want him to succeed. Yeah, like it's really weird, man. It it, it actually, I I think the two most polarizing quarterbacks in the league are Tua and Lamar Jackson, right? Because they have a very sim. I think like people put their planted their flag in the ground on it, and it's like it, when he does well, it's like man, I got to figure out the ways where I'm right on this, and over time, it becomes harder, and you just continue to debate it and debate it until. You just hope enough time passes to make sure you're right. Tua, he doesn't deserve it. Uh, you know, he, he some he, like everybody. He has his good games and his and bad. And sure, he's a young quarterback. I do think Mike McDaniel has been awesome for him over the last couple of weeks. Not not so much, but it is. It's kind of ridiculous the way that he's become this kind of weird everlasting topic. No matter what his output is, right. But no one else is. It seems you know like he's the is. quarterback. Yeah, there's. A, I mean, it's, it's he's a villain. He's one of the villain quarterbacks. Every year you got to have one. It's uh, it's odd to me because it, w- it's odd to me that everybody forgets how Baker Mayfield was talked about in the media just last year. We do this. We have yeah. these these cult of personality quarterbacks from Tebow to Johnny Manziel. But why this one? Even Dak Prescott for a time in his contract extension, they just. Yeah, some people but, Dak that is, but Dak's the guy we should be questioning right now because he has similar situation. Very talented team. You're not certain if Dak's the reason they're good, if the Cowboys are the uh-huh. reason they're good, but if he's it's si- coaching, he, whatever it is. He didn't sign that contract, but we did this with Joe Flacco. And all of this is far more sinister than just us wondering aloud, is this person good? No, there are metrics on what rates and yeah. what drives the national conversation. Hawk, you've been on some debate shows. You know exactly how analytical they are about their topics, where it seems as it's one note and lazy when I watch the same topics on first take. They have data to back it up as to why they're discussing these things. But there's always, there's like... The data, you can literally make say whatever you wanted to if you find the right metric. And that's... That's always my issue with it. And I try to just zoom out and say, okay, do, and, when, and what I'm watching, is this guy making the right throws? Is Are the receivers catching the ball? Now, you can really dissect it. Is it on his left shoulder, right shoulder going this way? And when he's moving to his left on this down, he's not great. And in, in the lefty throw, back spiral, blah, blah, blah. But it's what's his record as a quarterback? And I know that's not a QB stat. But it's how they no, get paid. No, it's a great stat. It's You're an right. incredible yes. stat. It, it's right. like the it's most stat important they threw at stat. Us during the Tebow thing, man. <laughs> it, I mean, but it's it's over time. It, like the longer it goes, and that win percentage sticks, especially in the NFL. Yes, it's a team effort, but that matters because there's nothing worse than playing in the NFL in these close games, which a majority of them are close. They're one score games, no matter how good or bad you are. Then you look across the huddle and you're like, this guy can't make the play to help us win. That is what separates a backup from a starter. I'm going to pose a question to you guys. Is this not the ceiling of what we thought Tua could be? Right, Stu? We talked about him being a scheme quarterback, and if he's in the right system with the right coach, with the right players around him, he can produce like he did at Alabama. All of a sudden, we're seeing that happen. Alex Smith, another guy who is a system quarterback, Andy Reid, Tyreek Hill, you know, Travis Kelsey, all those guys, and he had a really good season. Are we just seeing the best of Tua right now? (sighs) Yeah, I mean, I think so. I th- he, he can't get better than this. I mean, I mean, I, the last two weeks have been pretty bad. Yeah. How, how, yeah. how much better can he get? I mean, if you look at the season as a whole, he's been damn good. This is a guy that yeah. was in the MVP conversation three weeks ago. That's not a bad ceiling to have if he sustains just what we saw I over agree. the course of a month, where it was a relative flat track. I mean, that's a that's a that's a pro bowler. That's damn good. At what point was he a system quarterback? And this is a genuine question because you know I'm not, I wasn't in the scouting of Tua. I remember all the quarterbacks that came out that year, but I remember in college it was like Tua is the man. You know, this is why Jalen Hurts could never play here at Alabama. He has to go because Tua is so good. Was he a system quarterback at that stage? I don't think so. I think what people are saying is the reason for his success this season is Mike McDaniel and his offense. I don't think that's a bad thing. Because I would say Matt Matt Ryan was an MVP, and the reason for his success was Kyle Shanahan in that year. Matt Ryan's a good quarterback, but when you have good coaches – 
it elevates you. And I don't think that's a bad thing. And I think this is year one. We are like, what, 12, 13, whatever, 14 games in to them together. So I think from an ability standpoint, is this his ceiling? They are just getting started. And and that means he gets better. He gets better in a system because the more time you have in a system, the better grasp you have of it. Just because he's coming out like gangbusters this year before the, the last previous couple of weeks doesn't mean that that's the peak. Um, Hawk, I, can, I think I can answer that question. So, to me, when you're Your talking own about question, a, yeah, you no, mean, the question yeah. that he posed back to me, which yeah. was, mm-hmm. is to a system quarterback. The thought process for me has always been, you've got game managers and you've got game breakers, right? Mm-hmm. Like I see Tua as a game manager fitting in a specific system that helps him win. I don't think he's the guy that's going to take you a la, I don't know, Lamar Jackson, who's going to just completely change the game, right? Mm-hmm. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, guys get that can live agnostic of a system yep. because they're just so much better. I think Tua is a, a thought. He was obviously awesome in, in college, but when you move to this next level, as you know, yep. everything changes. So I think he became a system quarterback because of some of the limitations he has. Well, also that I think was around the same time of his major hip injury. Well, he's got so a thousand injuries for sure. Yeah, like that might have changed a little bit how he plays and how he fits into an offense because that was such a major injury that happened towards the end of his college career. And he's probably still in some regards recovering from from that therapy. I mean, I guess if this is the ceiling, the ceiling's pretty good. He has 22 touchdowns and five interceptions. That's, damn, mean, good. That's damn good in any generation. He's pretty accurate. And I say he's pretty accurate because to, to be one of those game breakers, and it, it does, you know, that's not something that people are like, oh, that's a super sexy stat because the ball looks a certain way. It doesn't come off the hand like it does with Justin Herbert. But to be, to your point, one of those game breakers, you have to have one thing that you are like, Probably top five quarterbacks in. Yes, Lamar is top five athletic. He's the most athletic quarterback. Justin Herbert has a top five, probably the best arm power. Mahomes is obviously great in the top. Like, would, I feel would like, you consider eyes a, as a top quality? Because Orlovsky was trying to tell course. us two yes. has the best eyes. Yep. That is a that is a real thing. You got to know great where eyes. to go. Like there, there's quarterbacks who can't throw very uh, hard. I will say it that way. Mm-hmm. But to put it nicely, that I've played with. Their anticipation is next level. And so I can't see the route and then throw it. I got to know where you're going. And honestly, Tom Brady is kind of like that. Now, to his eyes aren't Tom Brady's, but like Tom Brady knows exactly where he's throwing before you even get there. And it's because his understanding of the game is so next level. Now, I don't know if two is there yet. He's young. It's hard to get to that level. But he does have that that kind of feel and understand exactly where he needs to go with the ball a lot sooner than most people. Are Tom Brady's eyes Tom Brady's? There's no telling. 